All righty, Dad, we're on our way back from Lake of the Woods. Yes, we are, Tom. And since we're bored, we're going to film an Ask Pete. <laughs> since we're bored, no. Since you forgot to bring the questions in the boat, we were going to do the Ask Pete in the boat while we were fishing, but I guess that could have gotten in the way of fishing. So, But anyway, we're on the way home, and now we're doing the Ask Pete. Not because we're bored, son, because we want to answer these questions. Right. Alrighty, Dad, so our first question is from Daniel Fetchak, and his question is, what length and weight rod do you like best for twitch and glide baits? Well, I can answer the question with me personally. I would suggest, though, that it probably has a little bit more to do with the individual and also the height of the boat that you're working on. For instance, uh, you know, a John boat compared to a bigger bigger boat like my Recon that keeps you up off the water quite a bit, uh, you might want a longer rod in general. But uh, a medium heavy action, without a doubt, me personally, I prefer a uh, eight foot six. I like a longer rod. And, uh, but a medium heavy action, what may be actually even more important, you don't want too soft of a rod in the top half because you won't get any actual snap then. So you wouldn't, you know, to me, you wouldn't really want a medium action. But another thing that's real important for the side to side action that you want with twitching or glide baits, a straight wire or titanium leader tends to give you more of that action as opposed to a flexible leader like seven strand or fluorocarbon so generally that combination of a little bit stiffer rod in the top half and a straight wire leader and you'll get better action out of those baits all righty dad and our next question is from marcus s and he's wondering what your preferences are for a boat uh, fiberglass, center council, stuff like that, what you like to have. You know, you've had a lot of boats over the years, so what you all like to have in your boat, what's the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? What's the premier boat for you? Yeah, the premier boat, well, overall I prefer the glass over aluminum, uh, just strictly because the, the ride is better, because they're able to, to make a formed hull rather than a, basically a V-shape. And uh, so when it comes to ride, bigger water, without a doubt, but, uh, some hulls are better than other with ride, but uh, that's important. Glass overall handles a little better fishing as well from that standpoint. Uh, as far as there being a, there is no perfect boat. For what I do, the one I'm towing right now is probably the perfect boat overall because I choose to fish a lot of different destinations that are big water. You don't you don't need a 21 and a half foot recon to fish a lot of the boats around the Hayward area. A lot of, probably isn't the most efficient boat there, but as long as you can get it in the in the boat landing, obviously uh, you know you can fish out of it and be extremely comfortable with it. So I I do not overall having fished with a center console. There's advantages and disadvantages. I, I do like that, but what I go with strictly, let's just say musky fishing in mind for big water, I don't like any other extra consoles or walk through or anything. Take comfort out of it. I understand there's those options, but ideally I want the most room. I've only got the driver's side console. I've got a, I've got a fast boat, I've got a kicker motor, so I can cover a lot of water, I control too, but I've got all the space on the port side, wide open, cameramen can run around, anglers can run around and get through. So, I mean, ultimately, you know, that's, that's the best boat for me. Now there's, uh, well, there's a million things you could talk about. The only other thing I'll point out is that for smaller bodies of water, if you don't do a lot of TV filming per se or whatever, maybe the most versatile boat saving a little money overall would be a you know 18 foot class boat in a tiller model again in glass where you've got again that's the advantage of the tiller model. You've got a wide open boat where you've got a lot of room and uh, you know you're 
just a lot of fishing space and the ultimate ride and better boat positioning out on the water as well. Alrighty, Dad, and our next question comes from Chantel Logans, and she's asking um, how you feel when you lose, or how do you get over losing a fish, casting for them, you know, if you don't catch them? How do you get over <laughs> Mentally, you know. <laughs> well, you never do, actually. You're scarred for life. You'll never get I'm just kidding. Well, it, it all depends. It's... It's never easy, and especially if it's a bigger one and you get to see it real well and all of that, but I don't know, there's no there's no set answer on that one. I guess you just kind of got to think about what you're going to do next, and I, I'll tell you this, I guess what helps me the most is you will, no matter how much you do it, you're going to have peaks and valleys in both fishing conditions and general luck. So you're no matter who you are, maybe you're a little bit at, better at it than other people. I actually think I am. But believe me, I have tough times and I have good times. You have times when the, when the fishing activity combines with good luck and you're high on air because you can't do anything wrong. Everything's going right and you have the exact opposite and stuff in between. One of the realities, of course, is also losing fish. So... If you're down, you just tell yourself you can either quit, which is one way to get over it, or you just know it's going to get better. And you don't know when, but you know the odds are going to turn in your favor, the bite's going to get better, you will catch another fish, and then you'll forget about that other fish. It just eventually goes away. Your close friends may remind you from time to time if it was a real big one, but uh, the pain does go away. Alrighty, well that's the end of episode 12 of Ask Pete while we're driving here. Get a little more excited, son. Your voice, I am excited. Your voice is not excited. I'm burnt up. Yeah, you. Yeah, we were burnt up from the 12 hour days in the sun, that's for sure. So, yeah, well, and this is the first Ask Pete we've ever shot in a truck, towing a boat back from Lake of the Woods, so this should be exciting. Right. Right? All right. Okay.